If you create content that you care about, that you're passionate about, then people are going to respond. They're going to love that you're sharing that insight. And if you can impact and change one person's life, it can have an incredible ripple and impact. Welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm serial entrepreneur and investor, Emmy Kirshner. And I'm known for sprinkling just a little bit of glitter throughout the streets of Philadelphia and on the stages that I speak while I help creative entrepreneurs stop struggling as the overworked admin in their business and become the CEO of their multi-six and seven-figure businesses. What has fascinated me over the years are the stories of success and failure that courageous entrepreneurs who have put it all on the line face as they change lives, disrupt industries, and become incredible leaders themselves. So if you're looking for a community of engaged entrepreneurs, and you'd love to get some resources and tools that can help you fast track your business, I invite you to join the Tribe of Leaders Facebook group. The link is in the show notes if you want to connect with us. And of course, the group is free to join. goodness, everybody. I am so super excited to have Nick and I still cannot pronounce your last name. So please say it. <laughs> Bonatobis. Bonatobis. <laughs> and Nick and I have known each other for, I think, a couple of years, at least a couple of years. And Nick is my go-to guy. He is the founder and CEO of Digital Champions. And he makes doing video and promoting your own video and converting from video far less scary and something that you actually enjoy doing. So I am getting to that place where I'm like Yahoo video, but Nick, welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am so glad to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And it is amazing how the years pile up. Like, yeah, oh my gosh, it has been a couple of years. Like, how about that? So awesome. I think it was like a year and a half ago and I had just moved into my apartment building, but I had the community table and that. I went to the first one though, too, because that was in a- Laura's place. Oh God, Old City Social, yeah. That was so much fun. That was such a cool way to network. That was such a great idea. And and I got to meet so many people that I still stay connected with. You, you know, you, of course, as well. So that was awesome. Yeah. Well, when we can all be together again more safely, I will definitely do that because I miss cooking. So I want you to share like your super cool story with everybody and also share a little bit about how video can be less scary and we can actually convert and grow a business because that's exactly what you've done. So my story, I guess, really begins in 2014, 2015. I got my first job out of college working for a small business consulting company. And I immediately got thrown into this small business world where it was basically a startup. It was only, you know, in business for two to three years at the time. I got brought on, they were paying me like 10 bucks an hour, you know, basically like internship status, which I allowed in the beginning because it was still, it was considered an internship. But it got to the point where I was like, hey, I, you know, I can't support myself. I got a college degree. Like we need to, you know, make sure that I can support myself. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> Yeah. And I, what's, what's so cool too. And I'm so grateful for them. I found out later that they used to have meetings without me. So it was like three people meeting without me as the intern. And they would have a meeting about how they could pay me that week. There's a great message in that. And just like, you know, the willingness and the importance of building a team. And, and I was willing to stick it out, you know, even though the money wasn't amazing at the time, what had happened. And I started to get really engulfed in doing so many different things. And one of my main responsibilities was video. And I really got sucked into it. I just loved it. It was so cool. I was watching, I remember spending like hours on a Sunday, just watching YouTube videos about how to get better at video and how I can improve the skill, be more effective, like get better at it. But I also got to do a lot of different things within social media marketing and really in this, like, again, the small business world and having this whole process. And so during this time, um, an opportunity came up in 2016 for an event that they were having. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 2016, well, maybe as 2024, I think 24, 25, maybe at that time, they were looking for speakers. And I said, Hey, I can, I can speak. Like I'll talk about social media. And immediately when I said it, I was kind of like, Nick, what did you just volunteer for? <laughs> I can't I've believe done that. 
<laughs> I was like, but again, it's like this like eager personality. And part of it was, it's so funny too, because to this day, it's so funny. I just wanted to get paid more. That was all. I thought, man, if I'm going to be speaking at their events, like they're bound to pay me more. Plus, you know, if I want to further my career, you know, having speaking on my resume will be awesome. So here I am. Um, the event happened to be in Philadelphia, which is, you know, where I was living at the time. And so it was a little poetic in that sense. And everyone in the audience was twice my age for the most part. And I walk up there and I give my presentation. I'm like, I'm zipping around, like, you know, not <laughs> a lot of untailored, but, um, you know, and just, guys are running. yeah, I guess it's better than sitting on the stage and not moving. So I kind of did the opposite where I was just constantly zigzagging back and of course across the room. But what was so funny is that when I came off the stage after I'd spoke, it was only like a 20, 25 minute presentation, which at the time was like a ton because college, you give like five minute talks, you know, and there's a picture, there was a snapshot picture of me walking off the stage. And I just had this grin, this glow about me. And, and it's so perfectly captured just this, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I was meant to do. And to have that feeling, you know, at that time with no expectation of that, you know, it goes to show when you just kind of throw yourself out there and see what happens, you find something that you didn't even know that you were seeking. And so, you know, not only was it just like an amazing feeling of, of an empowerment, but, you know, people were coming up to me after and they're asking me questions and they're, they're saying, Hey, you know, this was great. And they're, you know, I'm giving the feedback. And I noticed that this, there was a need for this. Like there was this amazing need for people to learn more about all these things that I was learning. And I started to, you know, continue to speak on stage, you know, enhance my craft, get more educated about some things. And, and I helped grow that business from where they could barely pay me to over $2 million business. And I was basically the entire marketing department. So I was behind the scenes doing so much of the, the work. And, you know, when I saw this and I saw the success and, and I was getting paid well too, you know, from the success. And, but I also saw what my boss was doing at the time. And, and he was just living this amazing thing. He, he would come in at like 11 and leave at like three. He would take a, a month vacation, um, you know, in Florida. And I'm like, I want that. And so I started this entrepreneur journey of learning more and more personal development and reading books. And it came to this point and I, and I stare, I have a bulletin board and, and it says, build your module, you know, build your course. And I had this sticky note and it's, it's so faded now. It's so funny. Like it's a pink, but it, it doesn't even look pink anymore. Cause it's just right? like, it's so old. Um, but it's so amazing. Cause it's such a great reminder because I had a choice. I had an opportunity to build the course for them or build the course for me. And I went back and forth with this idea. I asked so many people, I was like, help me. I don't know what to do. And I would feel safe and I'd say, oh, I'll do it for them. You know, that's the smart thing to do. You know, they have an audience and, and it'll be a good opportunity right, right. to see how good it is. And then I would go back and forth again. And then I was like, no, I'll do it for them. Like, that's the smart. And then I go back and forth again. I was like, I'm going to do it for me. And I, I never, never looked back from that standpoint. And it was this realization that just from that decision, and I have it like marked in my journal as well. So, and it's, there's only like one page, maybe two pages in, in my journals that are marked out of, you know, four years of journaling and having that moment, realizing that I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to start my own business. Like, cause that's what the real decision was. It wasn't really whether or not you're going to do the course for them. Of course, for me, of course, for me means you're going to start your own business. What's so funny. And I use this quote is I loved my job. Right. Like everyone knew it. People saw what I posted on social media. They saw me speaking at events. I basically had full creative reign on all of our marketing efforts, but I wanted more, you know, like having a great job was not enough. And so like I quit my dream job to create my dream life. And I launched my course, I launched my program, started doing coaching, started going to events. And, and I had this one goal and it was to live by the beach. And it was 2019. We were, we went to BBD. We, we, uh, we met up while we were there. And right after the event, I went to San Diego where my friend lived and 
she had work and stuff. So I was completely on my own and I go to the beach and I'm sitting on the beach and I thought to myself, huh, this, like, I don't need to be a millionaire <laughs> to live on the beach. I can make this my life now. You know, why wait? I don't need to have all of these things that I thought that I needed. Like it was this thing. And so, you know, I made the decision right there on that beach that I was going to move to San Diego. I knew my lease was going to be up um, at the end of June of that year. And it was like October at that time. And, and so that was the second page marked in my journal was that day um, where I decided that I was going to move to San Diego. And then, you know, COVID happened in March and I was like, I don't care. I'm going like there was nothing that was going to stop me from moving right. here. And it's just one of those things when you truly commit to something, like really commit to something, there is absolutely nothing that can get in your way. Like if I had like lost a limb, I think I would have still like moved to San Diego. Like there is just nothing that was going to prevent me from building this dream life that I wanted and live in this city by the beach. So I ended up not doing it in June, but I stayed a little bit longer at my, my parents in the meantime and, um, and then made the trip out here halfway through September, did like a two week road trip with my best friends in a 30 foot RV. And then it ended with me living in San Diego. And I truly am just every day is the most amazing gift yeah, I just wake up and I'm like, I cannot believe that I am here. I cannot believe that this is my life. And looking back on this journey of seeing and uncertainty of, you know, leaving this job that was paying well, that had unlimited potential for me to grow. They talked about me being like the director of marketing. And, you know, I was basically number three in the entire of a company that is continuing to grow. And so for me to kind of leave in such a high position to be the highest position and be totally on my own, it's been incredible. I'm so engulfed in gratitude every single day that your dreams are possible when you just write it down and commit to making it happen and just go with your intuition and, and gut, you know, for me to decide to do the course for myself was my inter, you know, myself going against what was safe and going what I believed was right. And that was going to create the life that, that I wanted. The funny thing is too, when people say like, Oh, live in the dream, it's like sarcastic, but like when I say it, I mean it. <laughs> and, and, and that's a beautiful thing. This is what I love about you though. You set the intention of, because I remember you made kind of the announcement at the community table. You were at the, was here at my apartment building that fall. And I think it was before we went to BBD. But I forget exactly when the timing was. Yeah, I had been thinking about it for a while, but it wasn't like a commitment yeah. at and, the time. But what I love is that people say that all the time and then they let life get in the way. You were very intentional about I'm going to go do this thing and it's kind of scary and, you know, moving across the country where you don't know anybody really, I think you had a couple of friends, but you don't have a community to land into and you're transitioning out of your job into your business all kind of at the same time. The COVID thing too was actually the spark for me because at the time so I, I went through the transition with the company that I was working for to go from an employee to an independent contractor, but I was still working 40 hours a week for them. Technically on paper, I had my own business and I was making a certain amount of money, but it, it was just like my regular salary. So it didn't feel like I really had my own business. It just kind of freed up my time a little bit to work when I wanted to work. When COVID happened, we had plans in early March to transition from 40 hours a week to 20 hours a week. When COVID happened, I went from 40 hours a week to 20 hours a month. Yeah. And so it was very much a burn the ships kind of mentality. Yeah. And then not to mention, there was a, an event that I was going to be speaking at for them, which I had many times before, but this was going to be the first time that it was going to be for my business. And it was going to be me, my business, speaking on stage, 200 plus people at the event. Uh, and it ended up being, having to be virtual 
at that time it was like no one was spending money so this right. event was supposed to be my, my my big break like this is gonna be amazing this is gonna be the start of my business i'm gonna i'm gonna get so many clients it's gonna be incredible and then boom just like smashed you know not only did i lose that opportunity but i lost the revenue i was making with hurricane and just kind of scrambling to make it work but at the time it was it was invigorating because i felt free for the first time I was like, oh my gosh, I've like not having to work with them was actually what was holding me back. And, you know, and even at, at BBD, I had wrote down, I needed to let go of that organization. I felt tied to it. I felt like I had helped build it. I felt like I was a part of it. I felt that I was nervous that they would have more success and continue to have success without me. There was all this attachment that I needed to let go and, and release, which was just such a, an amazing feeling. And I do want to say this too. It's not all as it cracked up to be me moving to San Diego because three weeks before I left, I was sick to my stomach for like Aww. two whole weeks of just fear, just anxiety of like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Is this the right decision? I was so nervous, you know, that I was just making a, a huge mistake in leaving my friends and my family. And there's always going to be that fear and doubt. And I feel like it's important for me to share that, that it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but it did turn out to be when I got here. Now it is sunshine, <laughs> not so much rainbows, but lots of sunshine. You know, you pay for the sunshine tax in San Diego and it truly is amazing. It's just been an incredible, incredible journey to be where I am today. Awesome. And that's what I love is you were very intentional, took action, you were clear, you planned, you had to like jump over the roadblocks and the hurdles. And I've been in those moments where you have this thing that like, not that you put all like everything into, but it either doesn't work, doesn't happen, leads you thought you were going to get, don't show up. And inevitably they show up somewhere else, but it's still in the moment. You're just like, what am I going to do? And there was a certain level too, from that standpoint, that when I left for San Diego, I wasn't making the revenue that I had wanted to be making that I had set. But again, it just goes back to like that commitment. And I love this quote, Brennan Bouchard says this, it's like the definition of confidence is just like the ability to figure things out. That was all that I needed for me to make right. these decisions was like, I'll figure it out, whatever, you know, if I got to drive Uber or whatever, <laughs> you know, or like, you know, to, to fake, to make extra cash, you know, whatever it may right. be, I would figure it out. And then when I got here, things just like opened up and things started happening. I, I had my best month in January and then I'm, or in December, and then I'm having my next best month in February. So we're, it's only the 18th and, um, yeah. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. So it's amazing how things just work out when you invest in yourself and you just go after what you want and embrace it. Let's talk a little bit about the video because I know that most people or most entrepreneurs are really nervous about, like they understand how valuable video is and that they, and I'm air quitting, should be doing that and incorporating that into their marketing. People who are over 30 are hesitating because it's not how they've grown up. I totally understand that. And it's, it's an interesting thing too, with like Zoom and COVID and how people are starting to become more comfortable on video. What I think was super interesting for me and my video journey, it started before I started my business. I had all of these fancy business video equipment, microphones, all of this stuff to make professional videos, but I didn't have a business. I had this idea. You only see what you see. You only see what's in the public. You don't see behind the scenes. And so for me, I think it was like 2016, I want to say it was coming into the new year and I wanted to do a video you know, for the first time and just like talk about these goals that I was setting, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, go get her. I'm going to, I'm going to let everyone know about my goals about new year's. And so new year's came, I didn't make a video. And so a whole year goes by and it's like 2017 and I'm like, I'm going to make a video new year's. Here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about my goals and I'm going to make it happen. I didn't do it again, a whole nother year. No. So it was the whole year from 16, 17, and then halfway through 17, I was sitting in my room after I got back from work. I listened to a podcast and I had just like worked out. So my hair's everywhere. I'm wearing this like 
dirty white tea, you know, like just sweaty and a mess yeah. um, <laughs> in my room. And I just like filmed this video, talk about this podcast that I had listened to that was like impactful. And it talked about like the addiction to technology. And it was like, it was NPR radio podcast. I sat there with that video and I watched it like three or four times. And I'm like, oh, do I post the video or not? And I'm like, oh gosh. And I was like, oh, I did it. Oh, oh my gosh, it's out there. Oh, I did it. You know? And so it's like, it was so nerve wracking. Uh, and I made it to be this like such a big deal to, to press uh, publish. But what was so incredible, again, like I just explained looking like a mess and I had such an amazing response of people commenting, telling me that they listened to the podcast that I had recommended and, and they thought it was so interesting about the information that I was sharing. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And then I, I had one friend, he's like, dude, you should make videos all the time. Like you should do like three videos a week. And I was like, whoa, well, that's a lot, but you know, I'll commit to doing it more consistently. And so I just started doing once a week. And every week I did a video at a certain time. It was on Monday and I just did that. And again, there was no business model. There was no, it was nothing. It was just sharing what I was learning. And I had so many people reach out to me and tell me how much I impacted them. I had people reach out and say, it's been incredible to watch your growth. And so the thing was, I was documenting everything. I was documenting me talking about wanting to move to the beach. You know, I, I, I remember I had a, a video like three years ago, I bought a, a phone case that had a wave on it. And that was like my reminder for wanting to move to the beach. And so people just see the progression. They see these videos, then they see a business, then they see me moving to San Diego. And so they, they've been able to watch me grow. And so, yes, I had the fear and I was nervous about putting it out there, but amazing things happen. I, you know, I shared my story when I got on stage, like amazing, amazing, incredible things when, when happen when you do something that's a little bit scary. The best things in life come from that, that little bit of fear. And the thing that I realized was I didn't care about getting thousands of views or like that was never my intention. It's still not my intention. I don't, I don't care how many views. And I, and I tell my clients, it doesn't matter how many views. It's about the people that are watching. If you create content that you care about, that you're passionate about, then people are going to respond. They're going to love that you're sharing that insight. And if you can impact and change one person's life, it can have an incredible ripple and impact. And I love this story. Lewis Howes shared it. And so there's this old man, he's walking on the beach and there's all of these starfish. He sees this little boy like picking up the starfish and throwing it back into the ocean. And the old man comes up. He's like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm throwing the starfish back in the, the ocean. He's like, well, you're not going to be able to, you know, do it for all of them. It's like, well, yeah, but I made a difference for that one that's just such a powerful message, like how amazing it can be to have that impact, to be able to communicate. And with video, it's an amazing thing. Like if you think about it from a views standpoint, a hundred views is, could be considered low. But if you thought about being in front of an audience of a hundred people, is that low? Is that a small amount of people? Right. When you think about your stories and how many people are watching your stories on Instagram or, you know, these different mediums and, and how many people are actually following you, like, that's amazing. People are giving you their attention. And when you can have this level of impact, it becomes so much greater. When you have this mission and you have this message that you want to share, it becomes so much greater. It becomes so much easier to create content when you know that you're having this, this direct impact, you know, when yeah. you're able to connect with people on a, on a deeper level and, you know, you don't need this like fancy quip, go live and, and just talk like you're a human being. It's not, it's not, people love to overcomplicate it and make it think, you know, I have videos where I fumble on words. I have, there was one yeah. video, it was so funny. It had like a, a somewhat of a viral aspect to it where I said, film, like film your videos a bunch of times, like a lot of times where I didn't notice it until somebody commented on it. And there was a bunch of like people commenting and saying things about the video. And I'm like, I don't care, you know, cause there was also people that were like, don't listen to these guys. Like, you know, it's about the content. It's great. Like you just got to get it out there. You got to make it happen. We can't worry about these little things because there was tons of people that shared the video, you know, right. I think I got like 50 shares 
in like a week from this video. So those people may not have commented anything, but they clearly were like, Hey, this is great. This is great content. You know, whereas you often, you see the haters that are going to come in and, and comment, but that's a certain level of a success. When you start getting people that are hating on your content, when you get it, you made it. That's like the key. <laughs> I want to circle back and just do the numbers from an impact standpoint and keep it simple with that hundred. That's 700 people a week that you could be impacting if it's a hundred views a day, which is right. That, or even let's go simple math with 500 views a week from Monday through Friday, right? On average, it's 2000 views a month, 24,000 views, 24,000 people a year in just simple, short mediums that you can change somebody's life or and I'm sure you've had this experience where whether it's, it's written or video, but I think it's easier to connect through video where you just, they happen to hear whatever it is that you're saying at the moment that they need that, like that can turn around their entire day. That's an amazing thing to be able to, to share information that can have that direct impact. Yeah. Because generally that's why many of us start our business. That's why I started my business is I wanted to have a greater impact. And I felt that I could do that more on my own. And just like this level of being willing to put yourself out there and yeah. listen. Cause again, that you can do written, like, you know, blogs are obviously still a thing. My thing is, is have you ever had somebody text you something and you're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that. And you just read it a certain way. Or way. Just, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. That was not how I intended it to be said. You, you took it that way, you know, right. whereas video, the likelihood of that happening almost non-existent because you're able to convey the emotion. You're able to convey right. passion. And, and like, that's what people resonate with most with how you communicate the message. Like if you're creating video content about stuff you don't like, stop like stop making videos about content that you don't like. Cause guess what? If you don't like it, your audience isn't going to like it either. Yeah. And so then it becomes easy. Oh my gosh. I just have to talk about stuff that I like. Wow. Who knew that this could be so simple and easy, I, like to not overcomplicate yeah. this process. <laughs> I do have a question. I'm curious that initial part where you were saying it was 2016, and you didn't do the video in the 2017 and you didn't do the video. So it was halfway through and kind of the fear and then finally like getting out there and starting to do it and being more consistent, you know, just at once a week, was that kind of the catalyst for you to create the training that you have? Yeah. I had always had this idea of creating, helping people do video marketing and social media marketing. But when I saw the impact that I was able to create, even from a level of, again, I was filming in my car most of the time because I would like go to work. And so I would get to work after listening to like a podcast or an audio book. And then I would basically just share what I was learning or what I was feeling or what I was thinking about that day. And so it became a, a habit and a routine, but also again, seeing the impact, I was like, wow, this is amazing. What can do when you just are willing to just take out the phone and hit record. I knew how to edit videos. I was great at editing, editing videos. I knew how to you know, again, I had the equipment, I, you know, I have a DSLR camera with microphones and lighting and all of this stuff, but I realized that I was able to have an impact filming in my car with no microphone and the overcomp it's, it can be so simple where people are willing to listen to you and to be able to have that level of connection mm -hmm. with people just is so deeper. And, and the consistency was, was everything too. You know, that was what I noticed is when people see you show up consistently just by posting a video, even if they're not watching, they're seeing like they don't have to watch the video to have that same level of impact, you know, because I'm sure at first somebody sees me and they see a video and they're like, oh, what's this? Nick's making a video. Interesting. And then like next week, it's like, oh, there's another video. Like what's going on? And then there's another video and then there's another video. And I did that for it's been like four years continuously, a video almost, almost every single week. There's maybe been five or six weeks out of four years that I didn't post a video on social media because I felt like this obligation to talk to the audience that has been following me and, and listening to me. And they are looking for it. And that commitment helps the consistency. But the biggest compliment I get when it comes to video marketing it's like, man, you just show up. You just continue to show up over and over and over. And I'm like, yep, 
I refuse to quit because there's a deeper mission than just, oh, you know, I didn't get this many views in the videos. Now I'm not going to make any more videos. It's like, nope. Correct me if I'm wrong. For somebody who's kind of getting started and still having that fear, although I'll have to tell you because I've been very resistant, as you know, uh, I'm feeling very inspired to go hop on my phone, do another live. And I am playing with the reels now. Right? We have a scheduled reel shooting tomorrow <laughs> on Instagram. But the training will help everybody like alleviate that fear. Yeah, because it's all about creating like a system too around the process. Because for me too, like obviously it's twofold in showing up for consistently, but also being mindful of your time. You know, I understand that people have businesses and they have things that are going on. And so you may not be available to go live every single week, um, but you can plan out content, be strategic about it, using content to create a need. But again, the idea of just getting started, like, you know, one of the comments I've gotten to was like, somebody said to me, you know, I want to start getting with video, but I want to lose some weight first you know, what would be more amazing if people watched you lose weight from video to video, like how much of a greater impact would that be? Yeah. And then now you have this social accountability, like, man, I'm showing up every week, you know, like maybe I, I, maybe I'll need to work on my fitness. And, you know, a lot of us need this like accountability to be able to stay consistent. And so whatever the, like the objections may be, you know, I'm sure you guys are maybe listening like, Oh, I can't do this. Or I don't have time for this. Or I'm not pretty enough. Or I'm not smart enough. I need to fix my makeup. Yeah. All of this is lies. Like they're just lies. You don't need any of that to just show up because 99% of people are so scared to even doing it that they're going to be so impressed and they're going to support you. They're going to cheer you on. They're going to comment on your video and they're going to be like, this was great. And so it's one of those things that you don't actually know what's going to happen until you're just willing to do it and try it. And it's like, if you're willing to start a business, but not willing to do video, like what's, what's the real difference? Like, what, what are you worried about what's happening? Like you're going to fail that could happen anyway, regardless of whether or not you do video or not. Maybe because I've done it so well so many times, but like to me, it's just part of life. You're going to mess up. Things are going to happen. You're going to have to pivot. If you're in a life where you haven't had to do that, then kudos to you to stop yourself because you might mess up and you might fail is just opting out and playing it safe. So this is a quote from Jim Edwards. You know, some people say, I'm like, I'm not good at video. The quote is, In order to be great at something, you need to first be good at it. In order to be good at something, you need to be bad at it. So like, that's the principle of everything that you've ever done in your entire life. I guarantee that you cannot think of one thing that you did and you were absolutely incredibly amazing at it the first time you did it. But the thing is, you know, when you think about like a baby and they're trying to walk for the first time and they fall. You're not like, oh yeah, you're probably just like not good at walking. You should probably just, just lay there and just continue to crawl. You're never going to walk. They get up and they just keep doing it and they keep working on it and they keep getting better and better and better. It's that mindset with everything that we do, you know, in our business, you know, we can't make excuses. I'm not good at this. I used to say this all the time too. I'm not good at reading. I'm not a reader. It was this identity that I wrapped myself around. And I realized that it was a lie because it's just my past belief from years of growing up in elementary school and through school that I was bad. You know, I had to go to summer school to take extra classes, even going into college, I had to take an an extra assessment for reading and writing before I could even get accepted into the university. And so I had this story that I told myself and I just said, no, this is not true anymore. What does a reader do? He reads and I read for the most part every day last year and and the year before, but this year I actually committed and I've read every single day of this year. And I promise you, you heard it here that I'm going to read every single day of this year. Um, and I'm a hundred percent committed that because again, it could be reading one page. It can be reading two pages. That's still, still counts. Now, most of the time I'm reading, you know, 10, 20 minutes, but again, it's that 
commitment to just doing it every day. And it was funny. I had the realization yesterday. I was like, man, you were reading so much faster. You didn't even realize it. And it's just like one of those things. Yep. Here I go. I had this identity that I wasn't a reader. I flipped it on its head. Now I read daily and people are always commenting to me like, Oh, you got any books? And I'm like, oh, I'm reading this. I'm listening to this and I got all this. And like, I got 20, I could reference 20 different books right now that I have read and could recite quotes or different pieces from these books. So it's like, am I a reader? Yeah. Um, you know, one step further is like, I'm a voracious reader. And I wrote that every single day as an affirmation to help me create this new identity for myself. I love it. So what are you reading right now? So right now I'm reading, thank you for being late. A lot of times I do book recommendations and I have like a whole list that people recommend, but every time that I'm in a thrift store, I always go and go to the book section now and see if I can find some books that catch my eye. And so this was one of them. And I was like, Hmm, thank you for being late. That sounds great. I'll give that a try. I mean, there was another book too, that I read the power of courage or something with courage. Um, but so that's what I'm reading right now. And it's so interesting because it's not as much about the title as you may think, like the first chapter talks about, thank you for being late. It talks about Moore's law, just compounding effect from like computers and how people with computer chips, they kept saying like, well, there's no way we're going to be able to make it smaller or faster. And then the next year they double it and they double it and they double it and they just keep getting better every single year. And I was thinking about this morning too, with like swimmers and track stars. Well, they're not going to be able to keep breaking records, right? But they keep doing it. They keep getting faster. They keep getting better. And it's just this progressive nature as humans that we just continue to evolve and get better. And there really is, there's no limitations to like what we can do. And when you start to see that there's no limitations on what you can do, then the possibilities open up and nothing can hold you back because there's nothing weighing you down. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I so agree with you because people get like, oh no, this can't happen. And people thought we could, we're going to walk on the moon. It's all mindset. It's all, if you decide it can happen, you can think it, it can happen. Yeah. And there's so many stories like that. So it's your choice to choose like what you want to believe. Like, do you want to believe anything is possible or do you want to believe that you have limits? It's like, it's a choice. You can make that choice that like anything is possible for you or like you only have a certain ceiling. I'm also listening to the big leap right now too. So that's like the audiobook that I'm listening to. Oh, I haven't read that. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it talks a lot about like zone of genius. James Wedmore recommends it a bunch. And one of the things he talked about was like the upper limit problem in that often when we get to a certain level or a certain level of success, we have a tendency that we, when we reach that point that we are that we were self-sabotage ourselves in yeah. some degree. So if you have business success, then you do something messed up in your relationships and you, you later have like a fight. It's incredible. And he, and he talks about so many different examples of this happening, like with lottery winners and stuff like that, where, you know, people will self-sabotage. And when you start to see yourself doing it, and I do it to myself too. And I started to recognize it whenever I'm starting to have like really good fitness success. And I'm like really consistent. I'll start to like cheat a little bit more and like, Oh, well I deserve like a cheeseburger. And it's, and it's like, because I keep keeping myself at this level, like I can't look a certain way because I'm, I'm holding myself back from that limitation. And then now that I see that realization, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is incredible. What a powerful, powerful way to be able to reflect on these things of there's no limit. Like you could be happy every single day. But we have this tendency of like, oh, well, things are too good. Like I got to come up with something that's going to make me not happy because I just, I can't be happy all the time. You and I could jam all day, which is not the first time I've said this. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately we have to wrap up. I'm so bummed. Yeah, like, I understand. Because <laughs> I, like, I love your thought process because it aligns with mine and your journey is so fantastic. So again, for everybody who is afraid of doing video or feel like you're kind of there, but you're not great and you want some help, check out Nick's course because it is super easy. We're going to have the link in the show notes for it. Yeah, I have a free training. It's super easy. It's an hour long. talks about how to make video with people who actually want to watch your videos uh, yeah. without spending tons of time or money. So super yeah. simple, you know, it's an hour long training and you'll have exactly what you need to start getting success with it. Yeah. 
that's the thing I think that holds up a lot of people's oh it's going to take so much time because I have to do all this work and blah 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 and it doesn't so no it can be very affordable super easy and get great results one hour of free time doing something do this it's such an interesting concept too because it's there's like little tricks and things that you can do spending a dollar on Facebook with the proper target audience and you're going to skyrocket views with people you actually want to see your videos. It's like, huh, is Facebook ads expensive? Depends on how much you want to spend because you could spend like a dollar and get results from it. So like, do you not have a dollar? You know, maybe not buy that coffee this week and spend $5 on your video and get it in front of more people um, and get it in front of the people that actually want to see your content and going to have an impact from it. We'll have to have you back on again so we just can continue the video conversation and see where you're at. One more thing though, what's like on the horizon for you this year? What's your big goal? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, So this is actually coming pretty soon. I'm going to be launching. So this is like inside scoop. I haven't even talked about this publicly too much. Here we go. But I'm going to be launching a new program called Lead Machine Academy. And basically it's the opportunity to not only get the knowledge to have success with video marketing and generating leads online, but getting the coaching specifically from me. I'm a trained business coach. I've been trained by James Wedmore. I've helped six and seven figure business owners to get to the next level. And so a lot of people are going to have an opportunity to work with me on a regular, consistent basis because we all need that accountability and coaching to help us through these obstacles, whether it be through video or whether it be through life. And so I'm super excited to be able to offer this opportunity for people to work with me a little bit closer and get greater results. That's going to be amazing. I can hardly wait. So we'll have to chat about that at some point too. Absolutely. Nick, thank you so much. And for everybody listening, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for being a listener of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am so grateful for each and every episode that you tune in and listen to. And I hope that you get a ton of value that you can implement starting today. And I do have just a quick favor. If you wouldn't mind hopping on to wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review, it would help us tremendously so that the Tribe of Leaders podcast can be found more easily and help inspire other entrepreneurial leaders. 